If you want to continue to follow our adventure, click subscribe. So you don't miss anything, click the bell notification. So Carol and I joke around a lot. There's only three kinds of snakes that her and I are scared of. There's the big snake, the small snake, and the stick that looks like a snake. And the reason this is funny, because every time we're walking, I'll have my head up and I'll see something you know, ahead of me real quick, just out of the corner of my eye, and I'll stick my arm out to stop her. Nine times out of ten, of course, it's just a stick. So, well, yesterday I was recording my video like I am right now. It started raining. So I put my head down, and I was, you know, a good three quarters of a mile, maybe even a mile away from the uh, camper when, when it started raining. So like I said, I put my head down, and I just kind of hurried, uh, walked quickly to get back to the camper. I mean, I, I knew I was going to be soaked, but I didn't want the water in my eyes, so I'm, I just got my head down. Well, I get, I don't know, 100 yards from the camper, and out of the corner of my eye, I saw something. And it was a snake. It was a, it was a cotton mouth, which is a poisonous water snake. I heard a lot of stories about the water mucks and how dangerous they are and how deadly they are. And so I grew up, to be honest, I have a pretty significant fear of snakes. Yeah, I'm ashamed to admit it. I've done everything I can to try to get over the fear. But one of the things that I have learned as I've been trying to get over this fear for the last, oh gosh, I'd say 17 years or so, is education about the snake. I grew up with two poisonous snakes, the copperhead and the water moxin slash cottonmouth. Water moxin cottonmouth is the same thing. And the cottonmouth is easily identifiable because when they open their mouth, you can see their mouth is white. Uh, they're a black snake. Mostly black, sometimes they turn gray. I was really afraid of water moccasins, cotton mouths, based on some of the stories that I heard growing up. But before I do that, I want to talk about uh, the copperhead. The copperhead, I have probably had face-to-face -face experiences with probably almost every summer in my life. Growing up in Missouri, it was just, I've always had at least one experience with a copperhead. The same thing applied. Education has helped me get over that fear a little bit. Not a lot, because the copperhead's just a nasty guy. His venom won't kill you, so they say, but he'll make you sick. The problem with the copperhead is he likes to bite. He doesn't want to back down. If you're in his space, he will try to bite you. As a matter of fact, my daughter, and my ex-wife and I were riding the a bike trail called the Katy Trail in Missouri. She was ahead of us, my daughter was. And my wife at the time screamed, snake! And so when I looked up, I saw the snake trying to strike at my daughter. And I would say she was just a couple feet away from me. Of course, the snake hit the bike and not her, which is just absolutely fortunate. The other one is the cottonmouth that I grew up with. I've only had one experience with cottonmouth, or 50, however you want to look at it. Uh, one year I walked down into a, down a stream uh, bank, and someone yelled, The ground is moving! And I looked around and it was just what felt like hundreds of little baby cottonmouths. And so I ran out of there. But that was the only experience I ever had with them, until the other day. As I was walking, I had my head down, and I saw him out of the corner of my eye. He was just two feet away from me. Here you see I kind of laid it out. You know, the stick is the body of the snake. The, the pine cone there is the head of the snake. He's got his head up, his mouth wide open. I can see the cotton in his mouth. I walk right by him, by his tail. Not, not his head, his tail. So that's how close I was to him. But he never tried to strike at me or anything. I'm reeling from all these stories I've ever heard in my life about cottonmouths. This morning I woke up and I was still just, you know, that was the only thing on my head was this darn snake. So I looked it up. And doing so has made me feel a lot better. The stories that I was told about the, the cottonmouth is actually untrue. There's one story, and it's different variations of it, but something goes like, you know, the, the, a woman was either skiing and fell over or a woman jumps into the lake 
you know, 40 or 50 cotton mouths are biting her because cotton mouths can bite underwater. Truth be told, there is no documented evidence that's ever happened. Cotton mouths do not actually group together. They're very independent. As a matter of fact, when they have live babies, the babies go off on their own. They don't stick around in a nest or anything. The only time you see two cotton mouths together is when the males are fighting for a female or when the male and female are mating. That's the only time. As I'm reading, it says that these snakes are very docile. They don't really want to bite you. Uh, what they do is they threaten you. They open their mouth and they show you their cotton, which is exactly what this snake did, showing me his cotton. But boy, I tell you, when I walked by him, he just didn't really seem interested in biting me, which is exactly what they said in the article. The reason they don't want to bite you, it takes three days to refill its, its poison sac, its venom sac. So it doesn't want to it, waste that, that venom on something that's too big for them to eat. So they just threaten. Now, a, a majority of the time, if they do bite you, they have the ability not to inject venom into you. So the reason I bring all this up is because I've learned that education has made me less afraid. What I'm suggesting is if you come out here and you want to go for a walk, do exactly what I'm doing right now. Walk on the trail. Um, because if you get in the grass, you can't see them. But obviously you can see them on the trail. The other thing is don't do what I did. Don't put your head down. Keep your head up, which I normally do, but since it was raining, I kept, you know, I just instinctively put my head down. I should have kept my head up. They say eh, to make noise, but I've not actually seen that ever work. You know, beat the ground with a stick or, you know, have a conversation. I've not ever seen that work because Carolyn and I, you know, we go out for walks all the time. We'll beat the ground with a stick and we'll be talking. And it seems like it, the snake comes out of the grass just to see what we're talking about. And it's so easy to get distracted out here. You'll see something you're like, oh, look at that. And you'll walk off to it and there, you know, it'd be a copperhead or cotton mouth thanks for watching click like if you like the video and happy travels